All right, I've got another video for you. Now, this is a video I did a long time ago uh, on this channel, several years back, and I wanted to kind of uh, talk about this video because a lot of people don't scroll down uh, too far on you people's channels on YouTube too much because I've got, you know, 130, 140 videos and go back three or four years. And I wanted to actually do this, also revise a little bit, add a little bit more detail to it. Now, this, this one's going to be on the, uh, the five most popular cults that were formed and founded in the United States. Of course, will be about the Mormons, the, uh, which is also called uh, the Church of uh, was it uh, the Latter Day Saints, the uh, Church of Jesus Christ Latter Day Saints, the Seventh Day Adventists, uh, Christian Science, Jehovah's Witness, and the Pentecostal Charismatic Movement. And a lot of people don't believe the, the Pentecostals are actually a cult, but it's really strange. There's just so much information in Scripture, and I'm going to back all this stuff up with Scripture to show you. Just on a very, very, uh, you know, uh, summary of why you shouldn't even be following these religions. And if you are a member, please study up on it and look at their their history and look at their um, what their beliefs are and line it up and see if it aligns with the King King James Bible because the King James Bible says differently than what they're saying and teaching. So we have to be careful. Let's start with the Mormons. Uh, actually, let me see. I got. I've got a Book of Mormon here. Uh, this is the Book of Mormon. This has also got the other two books, Doctor and Covenant, Pro Great Price. When you like, if a Mormon missionary would show up at your house, you usually get a blue book, a little thin blue book, and it only have the Book of Mormon in it. And a lot of times when you have a uh, a Mormon come to your door, it's usually uh, two men or two women, uh, young, you know, and they're just out of high school usually, and they'll want to talk with you about it, and they'll actually just try to get you as much as they can to get you to go to the church. Uh, you know, like a local uh, church wherever you're at, like a, a, a Mormon church and things like that, try to get you in so they can quickly try to get you, you know, to tithe. Because what Mormons do is they'll, they'll, they'll pull right from your bank account 10%. And Mormons are, you know, the Mormon religion, the church as a whole is very rich, you know. But I actually been studying Joseph Smith for a long time. Here's one of his books here. And... Uh, I've actually found him to be interesting. I mean, I, I believe he was fully demon-possessed, and I think he was a pretty crooked guy. And uh, and there was, I don't know, a whole lot of good things you could say about him, but he was someone that was a full-blown cult leader. And it was a pretty bad shame uh, that people were following this guy. But, like, with all these other cults, you can avoid these by studying your scriptures, studying the King James Bible, and knowing. They come to your door, they tell you something like, wait a second, the Bible doesn't say that, it says this. And we follow the King James Bible because it's the actual word of God. If you want to learn more about Mormons, this book is excellent. One Nation Under Gods. It's an amazing book written clear back like 2002, 2003, about 20 years ago. I've read this book. This is fantastic. It has all this information about uh, the Mormons. You know, So, like I said, I do have the Book of Mormon here, which I don't recommend reading. It's a very strange book. But uh, what we see here, we see the... The Mormons, or the Church of Jesus Christ Latter-day Saints, was uh, started around 1830, maybe a little bit before. So I do believe 1830 is the first year they printed the Book of Mormon and things like that. Now, what it goes down to is Mormon. The, the, you have the, La the Nephites and the Lamanites, and they come to in the Americas 600 years before Jesus, they said. Now, none of this actually happened. This is just what they believe, something that Joseph Smith made up. He said that they come here out of uh, religious persecution, just like the, you know they probably plagiarized what the pilgrims did. And uh, he talked about these two civilizations and things like that. And he has the golden tablets, and it has the history of this. And he said he was visited by an angel named Moroni. And what it is is Moroni told him about these plates and told him it's you know all these different things and has a different way, and all these churches are wrong and everything else. But he needed to start fresh with the brand new church to bring God's actual word in. Which is strange. Now, we go back real quickly to the angel Moroni. Now, if we look in, if we look in Galatians chapter one, in the Bible, Galatians chapter one, we hear Paul, our apostle, say this: "But though we or an angel from heaven preach any other gospel unto you which we have preached unto you, let them be ashamed, as we say before." So I say now again, if any man preach any gospel unto you that you have received, uh, let him uh, let him be accursed. Now it's saying if if you get preached a different gospel than what Paul is preaching. Now mind you, Jesus Christ was speaking through the apostle Paul. So you could say that's what God said because it's in the scriptures. So if it says, but we, but though we or an angel from heaven preach any other gospel unto you. Then that which we have preached unto you, let him be accursed. So, so if they're saying something different than what Paul says, 
let them be accursed, even an angel from heaven. And the Mormons claim that Moroni was an angel. Well, Galatians says in, in chapter 1, verse 8, that you're not supposed to listen to an angel for a different gospel. And we're in the same dispensation as when Joseph Smith was. So that you can't hear a different gospel then anyway. Uh, Mormons also teach a, a works gospel, which works uh, as we read in uh, Ephesians 2, 8 and 9. We see 2, 8 and 9. There is no works. 2, 8 and 9. For by grace you are saved through faith. It's not of yourself. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. Not of works. What's a Mormon going to do? Say, well, I did this and I did that. I'm keeping faith. I'm doing all, what do they say, uh, all, after all that you can do, you're saved after all that you can do. What all can, can you do? If there's all that you can do, you have no life. You would just be completely working, 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 working for your salvation. That's what Mormons teach, but they don't follow their own teaching. It's insane. So it's, you definitely want to steer clear. If they're knocking at your door, I wouldn't even answer it. There's a lot of things I could say about the Mormons, but I, I've done videos just about them. If you type in, you know, Nettle Ministries and Mormon, uh, I do videos specifically for the Mormons in more detail. Now, next is the Seventh-day Adventists. And the second Seventh-day Adventists was started in around 1865, of course, in the United States. It was started by a woman named Helen White. Now, we read from Scripture that women aren't allowed to run a church or be preachers or, or you know, or teachers uh, to hold office. Now, if a woman wants to uh, preach the gospel to a man or anybody, please feel free to. That's a great idea. And the Bible says that all people should preach. If you're saved, you should preach the gospel and help people get saved. And there's nothing wrong with a woman doing that. Now, a woman being a Bible teacher or being the head of a church, God does not allow that. So we see how this started. And then we're going to go switch over right now to the uh, church, uh, excuse me, uh, Christian Science, which is started by a woman named Mary Baker Eddy with Christian Science. Now, Christian Science is one of those like Scientology, which is Christian Science more about it. Like you can't see a doctor or, or take medication and things like that. Like Jehovah's Witnesses believe you can't have blood transfusions and things. So it kind of ties in a lot of it like this. Now, we see how religions are ran and founded by women. We got to be careful because if we look in Revelation chapter 2, Jesus is talking to uh, John on the island of Patmos. He tells him some information because he, he tells him to write these letters to the seven churches. That's how Revelation starts. But he's, we see we can apply a lot of this stuff to different times. And I've done a video a while back because I did a video, a video series where I went verse by verse through the book of Revelation. And we see something happening because if you disobey God, things bad things happen. So let's look at Revelation chapter 2, verse 20 and 21. Notwithstanding, I have I have a few things to say because of say against thee. He's talking about the church of uh, Thyatira. He says, Because thou suffers the woman Jezebel, which calleth herself a prophetess, to teach and to seduce my servants to commit fornication, to eat things sacrificed unto idols. And I gave her a space to repent for her fornication, and she repented not. This is what happens. You've got to be careful. And if there's, there's uh, religions, churches started by women, that's automatically disobeying God instantly. So what else are they disobeying God about? Um, Seventh day Adventist says you have to go to church on uh, Saturday. And they teach about you have to uh, do works, which is follow the Old Testament. They're in a complete dispensation anyway when it comes to Seventh day Adventists. And things like that. Church of, uh, I keep saying Church of Christ. Uh, Christian Science, I mean to say. Uh, there are a, another religion just kind of preaches about all these foolish things like that. But they have a Christian Science has a, a book that she had written called uh, Science and Health, I think it was. And I don't even have a copy of that book anymore. I had one years ago. I don't know whatever happened to it. But it, I believe it's called Science and Health that she had written. And uh, there's a lot of celebrities that are Christian science, and they read through the book and, and everything else and do these little classes. It's, it's really crazy. It's really kind of hard to, to make sense of a lot of those things, but they're very much against any kind of modern medicine and things like that. It's just crazy stuff how it goes in. And, uh, like I said, and Christian science also started around 1880 in the United States. Now let's go ahead and switch over to uh, the Mormon, uh, excuse me, uh, the Jehovah's Witness. Now I do have... My Jehovah's Witness Bible, the New World Translation of the Holy Scriptures. Now, this, this, the Jehovah's Witness Bible is basically a plagiarized NIV version. Just like the Book of Mormon 
is a plagiarized, uh, whoops, there we go. The Book of Mormon is a plagiarized King James Version. Now, the Mormons do use a King James, but they don't really follow it. They follow the Book of Mormon. And Joseph Smith just took the, the King James Version and plagiarized it because the, King, the, the Book of Mormons has the V and the thighs and stuff like that, as the King James does. It's really, it's really strange how that does that. But back to the Jehovah's Witnesses, they don't believe, they believe strange things like Jesus didn't die on a cross, he died on a tor tor torture stake, which makes absolutely no sense. Um, they also, like the other ones, have a false way of salvation. They all, that's what it comes down to. They all have a false way of salvation. Um, they have a work salvation as well. And if you want to read more about the Mormons, I actually have this one. A lot of books, excuse me, about Jehovah's Witness. There's a lot of Jehovah's Witness books out there. And they talk about how there's a works gospel. And uh, I actually read uh, one little pamphlet I found, uh, I think I was at the laundromat years ago, and somebody had left a more Jehovah's Witness pamphlet. It was talking about how you get saved by the ever-popular uh, verse that people get mixed up, is Romans 10.13. Uh, For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. They're using, at least that pamphlet from the Jehovah's Witnesses was using that for a way of salvation. If you call upon the Lord, dear Lord, save me. Am I saved now? No, I was saved before. I got saved by trusting in how Jesus died for my sins. I trust he spilled his blood for my sins, making a blood atonement. I trust that Jesus died in, for my sins in my place. And Jesus was that propitiation of peace and the wrath of God for my sins. He took the judgment away from me, from my sins, and he took away the hell. He took the punishment in my place on the cross. I'm guilty. I'm a sinner. And Jesus is the innocent one that paid the debt with his blood. And I trust in what he did. I trust in nothing else for salvation except for what Jesus Christ did for me. That's what I trust in. I don't trust in me. I'm a sinner. I'm a failure. I'm nobody. Jesus Christ is somebody that is a sinless actual perfection. And I couldn't save myself no matter what I did. I could not save myself. Jesus did it for me. So I trust in what he already did on the cross. And that's what I always did. It. It's all about faith. Trust, believe. It's not about anything you do. It's not about here to say this prayer or call upon a name or ask Jesus into your heart. Those things are, it will do you no good. It's all about trusting. It's all about, I trust in what Jesus did was more than sufficient to save me. And I get to go to him because he paid for me and purchased me on the cross with his blood. The blood atonement. But these other religions, they don't believe that. They always, always have works and a lot of them has to do with a lot of money. Mormons, Jehovah's Witnesses. You know, they make a lot of money. And then you have the Pentecostal Charismatics. That movement started around 1900. And actually, I'm not sure for sure, but I've actually heard it, heard people say that it was started out, out of the Methodist Church and things. So we have to see because when it comes to uh, the Pentecostal Church, we can look at a few verses here. One here is from... I'm in Romans. Let's go Roman eight, Romans eight twenty six. Now the Pentecostal Charismatics are the ones that go blah 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 blah, you know, and act like they and they think they're speaking God's language or something, which is foolishness. If we look at here in Romans chapter, uh, let's say eight verse twenty six, we see, and we know that all things work together through good to them that love God, uh, to them who are called according to His purpose. Let me see. That's a great verse too. I said twenty six. I have just read twenty eight. 26. Likewise, the Spirit also helpeth our infirmities, for we know not what we should pray for as we ought. But the Spirit itself maketh intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. Groanings which cannot be uttered. That's the Holy Spirit. That's the context of the Holy Spirit speaking to God. God's, the Holy Spirit is sealed to you for eternity if you're saved. You're saved. You're sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. That's what it says in Ephesians uh, chapter 1, verse uh, 13. And if you're sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise, you are saved, which means the Holy Spirit is going to speak to you, speak to God on your behalf. The Holy Spirit could, could, be, could speak to the Lord and speak to God and say, well, they're having issues here, they're having help here and everything else. And the Holy Spirit's speaking for you for different things. And that's amazing. How, how wonderful is the Holy Spirit, you know, to do that, speaking to the Lord in, in, for us. It's a speaking it, uh it says, but the Spirit itself speaketh intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. Well, the Pentecostals and Charismatics believe that they're speaking the language of God. Well, it can't be uttered, so why are you uttering it? It's not even allowed. Let's look at 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 16. 2 Timothy 2, 16. 
Here it is right here. It says, But shun profane and vain babblings, for they will increase unto more ungodliness. A bad babbling. Is that what people do? They're babbling. They're not saying anything. And there's people out there that believe, well, I can interpret it. Because they're taking the scriptures backwards. They're talking about speaking in tongues. Speaking in tongues has nothing to do with what they're doing. Speaking in tongues biblically means that someone speaking a written, spoken language that actually exists. It, it Pentecostal comes from that Pentecost in um, the early book of Acts when the apostles were speaking in tongues, meaning they were automatically, by the Holy Spirit, speaking in a known written language that exists so that other people around them could he understand what they're saying because different people on that day were speaking di different languages. There were different parts of the countries, the different parts of countries all over. So they didn't all speak the same language. But the apostles were speaking in their own language so that these people could understand what they were saying. That's what they what it was. Speaking in tongues, you can speak in tongues, learn how to speak a different language. You want to speak Spanish, French, German, great. Learn how to speak the language, then you're speaking in tongues. But if you're babbling and no one knows what you're saying, that's that's against what the scriptures say because it can confuse people and it can be something demonic. You could possibly get a demon that way. I've heard of these ha these things happening, people just babbling and, and saying these things, and they could get a demon. It's very you gotta be very careful with things you don't know what is being said, you know. So you have to be careful. And I want to make a, a point here about the Jehovah's Witnesses while we're at. Let's go over to uh, Revel, excuse me, uh, Romans chapter 16. Uh, Romans uh, 16, 18 through 19. I want to hit back on the Jehovah's Witnesses real quick. And it says here, and it says, For they that are such serve, serve not our Lord Jesus Christ, but their own belly, and by their own works, words and fair speeches deceive the hearts of, of the simple. I want to be simple. Simple people in this context means people that are a knowledge of Scripture. They don't know their Bibles. So they can be led away like, well, this person has, a, has authority in their voice. They seem like they make sense. Well, they can say anything to you at this point because you have no idea what the Scriptures are then. So you have to be careful. Simple people. Don't be a simple person. Know your Scriptures, you know. In verse um, 18, for they, are, for they are such serve not the Lord. Okay, verse 19, and move on. For your obedience has come ab uh, abroad among all men, and glad therefore for your, on your behalf. But yet I would have you wise unto the which is good and simple concerning evil. Be wise unto these things. Know what's evil. We have to understand what's evil. Well, the Bible teaches you what's good and what's bad. We have to be very careful. And scoot up to 17. I've got to read 17. Now I beseech you, brother, mark them which cause division, offense, uh, offenses, contrary to the doctrine which ye have learned, and avoid them. What Avoid what? For they that are such serve not our Lord Jesus Christ, but their own belly, and by good works and fair speeches deceive the hearts of the simple. Again, the hearts of the simple. You've got to be careful, because these people, these religions, will give you false doctrine. Again, these people that are coming to your door or teaching you, like Jehovah's Witnesses and Mormons and so on, they don't know they're teaching you something wrong. They're deceived. And if you're deceived, you don't know you're deceived. So you have to be careful. They're not reading the Bible. They're reading their, you know, rewritten Bibles, the, the New World Translation, the Holy Scriptures for the Jehovah's Witnesses, or they're reading the Book of Mormon for the Mormons. They've been taught that way. They haven't learned another way. And they've been taught lies. So they're taking the Bible and taking it out of context, just twisting Scripture to make it fit. That's how you have different Bibles for different religions. Because you can't have sound doctrine and have a cult. I mean, these Jehovah's Witnesses had to change what they did. And they had to make a book to say, well, this is what it really says, does it? So all this, throughout human history, God didn't tell the truth. But give it to you, and when it is started, Jehovah's Witnesses started about 1881. So about 1881, then God said it's time for the world to know this. It's, that doesn't make any sense. It's talking about in the latter times. In the latter times. In the latter times, it's going to be bad. What's it say here? In latter times, it's talking about in the end times or getting close to the end. So someone's saying, well, we'll just go ahead and give you the information now. It doesn't matter. It says, uh, let's see. Together, I'm trying to think about latter times. It makes me think of Second Thessalonians chapter 2 about the falling away. It says uh, be a falling away first. It's funny because talking about this, they're talking about a falling away. It says, 
in uh, Second Thessalonians chapter two, starting verse three, it says, "Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day, what day? That's in the context of the rapture. That day shall not come, except there be a falling away first, and that man is sin be revealed the son of perdition, a falling away, apostasy. Apostasy means people that are leading you away with false doctrine, and it's been going on. That's the latter days, and then once the falling away happens." Then you, you, there first must be a falling away first. And the man of sin be revealed the son of perdition. The man of sin, son of perdition, the Antichrist. We see how that works, how these latter times, these latter days. So we have to be careful. If you have these people knocking on your door, I would rather not answer it if I was you. you know, but then you, you've got to be careful because they can twist words. And sometimes words, definitions, they think of, the, of a different definition to what you're saying. You could say one word and they'd say the same word. And you may have a different, different, different definition of that word than they do. So you have to be careful. There was actually a, a book about Jehovah's Witness. I don't think it's this one. Uh, a long time ago, and it actually talked, and actually was a book about Jehovah's Witnesses' uh, word definitions, and their words are different. You know, because they, they, Jehovah's Witnesses, Mormons do not believe in a rapture. That's foolish. That's the rapture. It's clearly in the King James Bible. Um, the Pentecostal Charismatics might not even know there is one. They don't really know their Bibles that well. Um, except that the Adventists don't believe there's a rapture. See, they're all waiting for Jesus to show up. Well, who's going to show up before Jesus? The Antichrist. And so many people are going to fall for him and say, well, he's Jesus because he's doing these lying signs and lying wonders. So you have to be careful. The first, the person coming next showing you miracles is not Jesus Christ. It's the Antichrist. We know that from Scripture. Jesus will arrive and he will rip open heaven and earth and Armageddon. He's not coming yet. He's already come. He's going to come back at the end of Armageddon, after after the Antichrist has done his things, and Jesus will throw that man, well, which is devil himself, off of his throne. He will rip him off the mercy seat and take his rightly spot on it. The, the next one that comes is going to show you signs and miracles and all this stuff. It's not Jesus. I'm going to tell you right now, it's not Jesus. But the thing is, though, I will not be here to tell you that because I'm going to be raptured out. If you want to be raptured out, you trust in what the gospel says. The gospel is 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 1-4. through 4. We have to understand that it's what Jesus did and how he did it is what we had faith in. We have to have faith in that blood atonement. There cannot be, not, there cannot be a forgiveness of sins without the shedding of blood, Hebrews 9.22. We have to understand that Jesus died in our place for our sins. He was the Lamb of God that took away the sins of the world. And what, what does the Lamb of God do? He died in your place for your sins because if you ever sin one time in your life, you're, you're going to die. And Jesus died in your place for your sins. He was the propitiation. He was the one that appeased the wrath of God. He took your punishment on the cross. He took hell in your place, and he took your punishment, uh, your punishment, also your judgment in your place. So if you trust in what Jesus did, you can't go to hell because the hell's already been paid for, and you can't be judged the great white throne of judgment because he's already been judged in your place for your sins.